उपनिषद सीरीज लिविंग थ्रू कॉन्शियसनेस देर आर टू वेज टू लिव योर लाइफ वन इज लिविंग थ्रू आइडियोलॉजीज द अदर इज लिविंग थ्रू कॉन्शियसनेस ओल्ड मैन earlier lived through ideologies when i use old man i mean the man before the emergence of new man lived through ideologies new man will not live through ideologies instead he will live through consciousness when it comes to ideology there comes morality and many other things with it new man will live through awareness he will be responsible to himself and to the existence he will not be moral in the old sense of the word instead he will be a moral there are two words either you are a moralist or you are not but when you have transcended these boundaries then a new world comes into existence a moral he is open and honest he is transparently real authentic and self disclosing there will be no sign of hypocrisy he will not live through goals instead he will live this very moment he will know only one time that is now and one is space the old the old is already on the cross road on the cross and new is already on the horizon and that is the reason i say again and again rejoice the new man is emerging out of you the image is not yet very clear but the horizon is becoming red the sun is about to rise soon sun will be high in the horizon the image of the new man is still awake a few hints here and there can be given morning mist is there and the image is still awake but is still and a few things are very crystal clear about this new man and this is of tremendous importance because it is said the monkey became man it is said that since monkey became man man has remained the same with this evolution he only learned the art of monkey now a great revolution is on the way it is visible through your eyes and understanding it is far more deep going than the revolution that happened when monkeys started walking for the first time on the earth and became human beings the change created mind and that change brought psychology into it now another far more significant change is going to happen and that will bring soul in the man will only be a psychological being but a spiritual being as well you are living in one of the most alive times ever new man has already arrived in fragments but only appearances in fragments and has been arriving for centuries but only 
here and there. This is how things happen. When spring comes, it starts with one flower. But when one flower is there, you can be certain that spring is not far away. It has come. The first flower has heralded its coming. Jaratrus, Krishna, Lao Tse, Buddha, Jesus, these are the few flowers. Now the new man is going to be born on a greater scale. This new consciousness is the most important thing that is happening today. I would like to tell you something about this new consciousness, its orientation, its characteristic, because you have to help it to emerge out of the womb. You will be the one for the emergence of this. New man can only be born out of your womb. You have to become the womb. Meditation is an experiment to clear the ground so that new seeds can be sown. If you understand the meaning of the new man, you will be able to understand the significance of meditation too. The religion without God cannot be prevented now because it is only a question of the new man's coming into existence. It is a question of survival of the whole earth, consciousness and life itself. It is a question of life and death. Old man has come to utter destructiveness. It has reached the end of its life. You have to understand and protect the new because the new carries the whole future with it, future within its womb. A man has come to a stage where a great quantum leap is possible. The old has been otherworldly and was against this world. By new man I mean one who is guided by consciousness, who is a bridge between inner and outer. The two are not separate from one another for him. The old was always looking up to the heavens. The old was more concerned with life after death than life before death. You can know the life after death only if you have lived this very moment totally with awareness. It is from the womb of now, future emerges. Tomorrow emerges from today. If you have lived this very moment, now, today, you do not have to worry about anything else. You can rejoice in this very moment. The new man's concern will be life before death. His concern will be this life because once this life is taken care of, the other will follow out of its own accord. One need not be worried about it. One need to think, need not even think about it. The old man was too much concerned with God. That concern was out of fear. Most of the religions were born out of fear, fear of the fire of the hell, punishment and many things like these. No man will not be concerned with God, but will live and love this world meditatively out of awareness and out of the total awareness he will experience the existence of God. If you are aware of your surroundings, if you have envisioned 
the same current that flows into you flows into the other as well. I take a simple example. Two people are engaged in a quarrel, both of them sitting in one room, sitting on one couch. Maybe they are a spouse, maybe they are male and female, they are engaged in a quarrel. If one happens to touch the other, the other says, do not touch me. But you have forgotten completely that both of you are sitting in one room and one couch. Your feet are on the ground. In a way, first of all, you are sharing the same space. There is an environment you are breathing out and breathing in. The other is also breathing out and breathing in. Whatsoever you breathe out, it remains in that atmosphere. And so is the case with the other. It's not that you are keeping your glass of water you are drinking from your glass and the other is drinking from his glass. Both of you are breathing in from the same atmosphere, touching the same ground, sitting on the same couch somewhere or the other. You are touching one another and still you tell the person, do not touch me. Living with this understanding that we are bound to each other by a causeless force. It is the same magnetic force that helps you to sustain. It is the same magnetic force that helps the other to sustain as well, to remain suspended. There is a power within that knows beyond our knowns. We are not aliens nor as strangers joined, we are bound to each other by a causeless force. And this causeless force that binds us together, you can call it God, you can call it cosmic energy, you can call consciousness, you can call awareness, whatsoever you may call it. Consciousness is a moment to moment things when you are conscious of it then you can live a life of awareness. Therefore, the new man's concern will be life before death. How I live this very moment is important to me. If I have lived this very moment, I am not concerned about the results that will happen to me. Because once this life is taken care of, the other will follow of its own accord. One need not be worried about it. One need not think about it. The old man was too much concerned with God. He lived through, lived out of fear. The new man, one who is living out of consciousness, is not concerned with God, but will live and love this world meditatively out of awareness and out of total awareness he will experience the presence of that cosmic force manifesting through each and everything sentient and insentient around. Tomorrow is in the womb of today. Take care of it. Take care of today and you have taken care of it tomorrow automatically. There is no need to worry about what will happen tomorrow. There is no need to be in any way worried about tomorrow. It will become, if you become too much worried about tomorrow, what will happen then? You will miss this very moment. Tomorrow will 
come as today. It always comes as today. If you have learned this suicidal habit of missing today, you are bound to miss tomorrow as well. Bound to miss tomorrow. You will go on missing. The old man was continuously missing and in the process he remained miserable and sad. And because he was too sad, he became against the world and blamed the world and the world means the other for his misery. It is not so. The world is immensely beautiful. It is all beauty, bliss and benediction. Only you have your eyes closed. There is nothing wrong with the world. Something has definitely wrong with your mind, with your understanding. Old mind was either past oriented or future oriented. And these are the two not separate things, not separate orientations. Old mind was concerned with that which is not. The new mind, new man will be utterly in tune with that, it is, that which is. Because it is God. It is reality. And Upanishad says, Iti, Iti. That which is, is. The moment has to be lived in its totality. And that too is spontaneously. Without any a priori conclusion or ideas. Therefore, instead of carrying ready-made answers, is stuck with philosophy, religion and all kinds of nonsense, the new man is going to live life without any a priori conclusions. Science is based on a priori conclusions. But when you are living moment to moment, there is no a priori conclusion. How would I respond to the next moment when it comes? It happens when it comes. When it comes in that very moment, whatsoever happens, there is no guilt, there is no nothing in your mind. It is a spontaneous overflow. Without anything, any conclusion, you would have seen the children being spontaneous. If something happens, their response is spontaneous and slowly and slowly we group this spontaneous overflow in the children. They begin to live with a priori conclusions. They begin to learn to live with the ideologies. Without any conclusion, one has to face the existence and then one knows what it is. If you have already concluded and your conclusion will become then a barrier, it will not allow you the inquiry. How can you go into the hypothesis when you have already decided? For instance, you are going to a restaurant. Your children take you to the restaurant, they order the dishes. You have not tasted it and you have already made the conclusion. This is not the way. The new man will experience, will experiment. And in that very experiment, he will go beyond this. Very often it is asked, 
Are you enlightened? If I answer, what criteria do you have to know? If you want to know this particular person is an MD in a particular type of medicine, if I say, if he says anything, you have no criteria to know. In order to assess a person, you have to attain to that state which is higher than that. When the people write their thesis, either for whatsoever reason, it has been judged by those who have gone beyond that state. It is very easy to answer and when somebody has attained to that state of awakening and enlightenment, all he can say, the enlightenment is all around. You have to feel what happens in the presence of such a person. When you see a flower, does it not happen anything into you? When you see a sun rising and you are vulnerable to it, does it not happening to you? Just as in the presence of the rising sun, the flowers begin to blossom, does it not happen something begins to blossom into you? If that is happening, that there is something, something that is beyond the expression, manifesting through these ordinary words. These words carry with them in their womb a seed of awakening. And that is something that one has to feel within. The words, because you do not have any criteria, it is meaningless and on the part of the enlightened one, if he says, I am enlightened, it is wrong. Because everything is illumined. You were in the darkness up to now, so you have not known the moment you have come into the light. You cannot see anything other than that except that enlightenment is all around, light is all around because there is no more darkness. You are not blind anymore, you can see the light surrounding you. And that is the very meaning of being enlightened. The drop merges into the ocean and it willingly dissolves in the water of the ocean and it becomes oceanic. The, it is ready to accept the qualities of the ocean. It manifests each drop that you take out of the ocean that represents the quality of the ocean. Whatsoever a man of awakening speaks own, whatsoever man wants, whatsoever you take out, out of the ocean, will carry that taste. Still you want to know how to meditate. Meditated, meditation is not something that you can do, it happens in a moment when there is no thought into it. You can begin just as you are listening to this message. These words overflow. It will create a groove in your consciousness. When you constantly, day after day, listen to these words, your way of thinking, your way of operating begins to change. Something that these words will create, because these words are not ordinary words, instead they carry, they translate the inner silence in the form of words that you are hearing. And when it reaches you, 
it gets decoded once again and brings this silence into you. It is that silence that these words carry in their womb helps you. When you breathe in, it is the air that comes in, but along with the air comes an invisible particle that is known as pranavayu, or William Reich calls it orgone or the energy particle. It is that which helps, which is the cause of the breathing. The air that you breathe in is merely a container to carry the carrier. It is the plane that takes you from one destination to another, but the journey is different. It will... So there is... Meditation is something that you have to be. Just you have to be. You can capture it in the company of the one who is meditating. Sometimes sitting by the side of the ocean, watching the waves, something begin to happen to you. You are in a state of meditativeness. There are certain techniques that help you only to remove the obstructions that create barrier and because of which if you are very much saddened you are disturbed because of certain problems and you come to the beach come to the ocean you will not hear the the music coming out of the waves as they rise and fall instead to you this will be a disturbance a noise and that is meditation techniques will only remove that obstruction that makes it difficult for you to change your vision and what you had been considering at noise is in fact the music of the roaring of the waves on the surface of the ocean. There is no need for any a priori conclusions or because you have to face the existence without any conclusions. Only then you will know what it is what it is. You have already concluded and your conclusions have become a barrier in your way of experiencing something. Your conclusions will not allow you the inquiry. Your conclusions will become a blindfold. It will not allow you to see the truth or your all your investments will be in the conclusion, you will distort reality to fit into your own conclusions. That is what has been done up to now. The new man will not be a Hindu. A Hindu thinks in his own way. He tries to see if it fits the criteria of the Hindu tenets or the Muslim, or Christian, or communist, or this or that. One person have a serious problem. As far as what I know, what I understand, what I explain is good because it is within the Sufi tenets. But my name is the problem. I come from a Hindu background. And that is the problem for that person to accept me as Sufi. This is a priori conclusion. New man will have a total trust in meditation and awareness. New man will simply be an opening, a window to the reality, a window to the reality. He will allow the reality as it is. He will not project his mind upon it. He will not use the reality as a screen. 
his eyes will be available without any ideas. No a priori conclusion. Instead of living with a belief system, the new man will simply live. And remember, only those who can simply live without any belief come to know what truth is. If you are living with Hindu conclusions or the Muslim conclusions or Christian conclusions, you will not know the truth. The believer or the disbeliever never comes to know what truth is. It is deep within you. Their beliefs are too heavy for their minds. Too heavy on their minds and it has beclouded their consciousness. They are surrounded too much with their belief systems. New men will not know any belief system. Instead he will watch, observe, see, live and allow all kinds of experiences. He will be available as multidimensional. New man will live out of love, not out of fear. Because fear serves death. Fear closes all the doors and windows and will not allow the fresh breeze, the fresh light to come in. Love serves life. And if you live out of fear, you will never come to know what life is. You will only know death again and again. And remember a person, remember one who lives out of fear, creates all kind of situations in which he has to feel more and more fear. Your fear creates situations. Just as your love creates situations, if you love, you will find so many occasions to be loving. You will find any moment you can be loving. There is no special time or season for it. The new man will be discontinuous with this insane past. His trust is in love not in war. His trust is in love, not in fear. He will continue to live out of love. He will trust life and rejoice moment to moment. Each moment comes and then dissolves. This process is continuous. A moment is born. Like a screen it comes and then from the other end it fades away. If you watch closely how the images appear on the television screen, from one end these appear on the screen and from the other side after staying for a few moments these disappear. If you miss that moment when this particular scene is on the screen you have missed it. You have to be constantly watchful in watching the television. If you are watching the television show and you are not attentive to it, you will miss a point or the other. And this is what is happening in life. We are missing moments. And when one moment is missed, you have missed a lot. Because this moment is not going to come back. The wheel of time to swiftly it moves, goes on mopping as it rolls. No power can its fury ebb or can change its passage. It has been going and shall go forever without a break. And make the most of what he may, cause frigid claws of death may soon descend and seal your humble fate. And seal your humble fate. Then you shan't have time to mend. You shan't have time to mend. So when you are aware, as you are when you are watching a news or any particular show of your choice on the television screen, 
A particular scene appears only for a few seconds on the screen and from one end it comes into existence and from the other end it disappears. This is what science has discovered that there is a black hole where everything disappears into. If there is a black hole there must be a white hole, it is like a tunnel. If you can envision the television like a tunnel from one end you the scene enters and from the other end it dissolves. One moment comes from one end, invisible end, and then it dissolves into the other and gives birth to the next. When your television screen is freezed, nothing is happening, the new scene is not coming. And this is how your life is a freezed screen. The new is not coming in and you are watching only the freezed screen, the same scene over and over again. Your consciousness is freezed. You are not allowing the new to come into you. And unless and until you allow the new to come into you, you will not experience that which is. You will not experience the fresh breeze. And the fresh breeze, when it comes, it freshens you. Love is the only natural fresh breeze. It's only the natural quality that has the fragrance of eternity into its womb. Hence, love is the first experience of the new man. It is the first experience of God. It is the beginning of the experience of something new. God is much more than that. But love opens the door. God is inconceivable. But love is not inconceivable. It is natural, so love functions as a bridge between man and God. If the bridge is not there, how can you reach God? Without love, God remains simply an empty world. But with love, immediately you start understanding God and godliness in a totally new being. It is no more an empty word thing. Instead it starts having a great content in it, a great meaning to love is the beginning of the alphabet. It is the alpha. And when you begin with this, you grow into consciousness, then omega is not far away. It is a continuous journey from alpha to omega. 